All right, guys. So I'd like to show the trades that I've taken this week so far. Um, a lot of you that are learning the method or have bought the course, the main video course, um, hopefully are taking advantage of these things. And really, it's been very good and simple and profitable. So um, I'd like to review them. People have been liking when I post videos. Um, so why not? <clears throat> kind of tracking along so far. Uh, this new year, last year was the uh, last week was the big GU short, uh, and uh, I'm up to five trades so far here. My second week of trading, trading Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so this week, yesterday I had two trades: uh, the euro dollar and the euro yen, long about the same time. So it was a very similar setup, euro driven, and uh, I sort of spread it around on two different setups. That were happening about the same time because the euro was really driving that it may have appeared on other euro pairs as well uh so looking back to yesterday which is here and of course we have some updated stuff from today in the session but going back to where we were yesterday and what you should have had marked up for those that are learning the method is this fib area here all right pretty obvious and the classic 618 overshoot situation so we started the session price up here around london open and you know looking for price to come down not necessarily <clears throat> to this exact level but to, to come down and give a retracement so we can continue to go long we have a downtrend climactic volume we're trending upward we don't see a lot of weakness so we're staying bullish right so our background is bullish simple by definition the way we do it and we have a again a really obvious fib here, but also, you know, at least getting below the the previous swing low low point, maybe for a, at, at minimum a fake breakout. Uh, just to talk about some other areas that we that I had drawn up yesterday, which this coincides with that. Just to kind of go back in time where we were. So at least breaking the swing point, hitting the fib area, the 50 EMA. So this was the minimum that I wanted to see to go long. And price didn't set up there. The long setup didn't happen there. And it went all the way to the larger fib that I originally drew here. And the classic pattern of the 618 overshoot. It could have set up anywhere in here, right? But we see this so, so often. The 618 overshoots and the fake breaks, right? And the fake break at 618 overshoot. <laughs> So, yeah, look, another fake break today. Uh, so let's go to the five minute in this area and see the setup, right? So, again, if you know the background analysis, really simple analysis for those who are doing the method, that you would have had this fib drawn um, and know that this is a setup area. So the five minute. Now we had some news happen just when we were here, but let's follow the storyline. So we're looking for accumulation of strength in this area, right? We're looking for an imbalance here, basically, where buyers are active, sellers are inactive in this predetermined area. Uh, and we're not the only ones looking at this area, obviously. So when we enter the zone, uh, sounds like an 80s movie. We enter the zone here, and we already start to see the highest volume of the session. It looks small because we had this new stuff, but at the time. So that's the stuff that says, okay, immediately, once we enter there, the demand, the, the demand has kicked up. And as you see, lower prices, a couple of candles later, lower prices, lower price, and then and the volume increasing, and the 618 overshoot on the very high volume. Again, highest volume of the session came in there, even higher. So then we had the news, and, you know, not to dwell on news, but we talk about it's not whether the number is negative or positive. It's not uh, whatever the fundamentals suggest. It's just a time where activity increases, and if you know how to read a chart, then... Uh, we continue to trade and use that information so in this case it did a slightly lower price it had a high volume and we see it confirm as a as strength and nothing really happened off of that news 5 10 15 20 25 minutes later we're just sitting here so um you know nothing's really gone wrong with the setup of course we're going to have exaggerated volume typically on the news release that was the one high impact news of the day i believe and that was at the uh, u.s open 8 30 my time so we're sitting in a setup area. It doesn't seem to be a problem. It's good to let the news come and go and go back to normal and see where we are. Then we get, hey, what's that pattern again? It's a fake breakout because here's the low, the new candle, and we do a fake break here. And notice the volume kicks up into these lower prices. And 
these candles are getting bought into and demand is coming in here. And I've talked about this volume underneath the double bottom fake breakout at 618 overshoot with, as I talk about in the chorus and the way I call it is the unfinished U shape or a backwards J, right? Where you have the high volume points, even if the news wasn't there, we'd still have it uh, where the high volume points are off of the low price with this dip in the middle, right? So everything's lining up, right? Textbook stuff here. Also, I was using this as the automatic rally, as those of you learning the method know. So at this point, we have a proper push through the automatic rally entry right here, right? All textbook stuff. So that's where I got in the trade there. Um, and at the same time, and the set and the, the stop loss is allowing for one more fake breakout. So it was you know, 98 or something. Um, so then it plays out to a certain extent. It got a little late and I ended up taking off the trade uh, today. I went a little higher, but so there was that. And then again, the EJ around the same time. And maybe this is a little cleaner. Uh, pre pre marked area again, no surprise here. This was I'm talking about yesterday, the 50 EMA, and it was a fib right below it. It didn't quite get to it, but if you draw a fib back there, it was 50 fib was here. But as that your dollar was doing the 618 overshoot, this was hitting the 50 EMA here. Which, which acts as support, resistance, in, in trends. Um, and, and they very often do overlap with that FIB area and stuff for, for confluence. But that was there, which is important. You know, if it's just nothing going on there, I, I'm not taking a trade off of nothing. But we did have that. Okay, so yesterday, where am I? I still am today. Okay, so real quickly. We hit that 50 EMA. Again, Euro dollar is setting up at the same time with that 618 overshoot. We get the strength here really, really clean. 14 EMA test for sellers, low volume. We come back down, almost do the double bottom thing. Again, the volume increases here. We have this same volume underneath, right? The same pattern, same pattern. And going forward, this is the automatic rally, which makes, you know, I could have entered maybe on a no supply situation, but once the automatic rally sets up, I do like to see put this price push through it. If there is no automatic rally and we're just sort of moving up through here off no supply of a test area, then that's when I would tend to be more aggressive. More times than not, much more than often, it's going to set up that little resistance area, usually around that 14 EMA or whatever other levels you may have there. Um, but certainly that 14 EMA is common to create this pattern and the automatic rally. And once that's created, I tend to wait for, first of all, make sure buying is present here. The more, the better. We're usually not as much as the first low, right? We know this stuff. And then of course the push through and not seeing any problem with that as far as weakness. So that's the entry there. Basically the same thing as the Euro dollar. Uh, this was the news. Was that the news? Yeah. And Again, you know, didn't really create an issue as we confirmed lack of supply or, or and, and got our proper pattern. So the news kind of came and went, and that was fine. Uh, okay. So again, that was here. So next three hours, we moved up. And we moved up to, just to point out, a 618 overshoot, right? So we use the same tools. We know how to read a chart, and we know that this may happen. Plus, it got a little late in the day, whatever. So there's that, the two trades on Tuesday. Now, today also was two trades. One was very small, close to break even. I closed. And then and also uh, a nice pound yen long. So the AU was setting up. This is the first trade I took, which was, let's just reset this. And going into today... It was the trade that I was looking for yesterday, and it just sort of sat here and went nowhere. And then today we start off the session and got right to the point on that. So, again, we're bullish here based on our background, uh, not to get into the whole analysis. But basically, we're trending up here, and we don't see weakness. And that's the you know the most basic and proper way to, to assess things. There's no high volume at high prices, and there's a nice upward trending situation. Um, now, as price is pulling back, there may be another additional opportunity. 618 overshoot. <laughs> um, but we'll get to that. I thought I was done for today. I'm tired. There's another, this is another trade. I'll probably get in it. But uh, looking at this 
going into today. We had that fib drawn. We had this swing low here. So we have a fake break of that and a dip into the fib, right? Let's go to the five minute textbook. What happens when we get to the fib area? Highest volume of the session. Uh, this was market open, which tends to have a volume spike, you know, a little exaggerated. And once you get, you know, a little further into the session, you can you can trust what's going on. So for this to be higher than that really shows how much activity is going on. This is typically not matched right away. It's just like a spike that happens at the open, and then it may not be till news that you see that much volume again. Um, not always like that, but that's the way the charts are now. So you get that bang at the open of, of activity and usually chills out. So to be higher than that really showed, really in context, a lot of volume there. Again, right into the zone, confirming the strength. And then, and we were watching this during the live session where here we got, uh, there was a bit of pound news. And then uh, once that passed, we were able to see that there was some very low volume. Uh, again, automatic rally. In this case, not the 14 EMA. There was initially one there, right? We defined the automatic rally as first level of resistance after strength. So, you know, at this point in time, you'd be able to mark that. So that's technically pushing through there. And I didn't enter right away. The volume was maybe a, a bit on the higher side. Uh, where was the news? Is it here? Where the pound news was still coming up. Okay, it was here. So, uh, but looking at the pattern, again, here's the push through. The volume maybe was a little on the high side. I was being patient. Also, I was ideally looking for this. So I didn't want to rush into it, which may be setting up now. Um, this was, you know, today we were uh, basically... All the charts were saying, you know, like these six first pairs, look for the down move, the reaccumulation, right? The, the, the pop down in price into these areas, fib areas and stuff, and, uh, and look for the strength and the, and the proper setup. But we need that, that drop down to get that reaccumulation stuff. So this was just as we were looking at just beginning to get into that area of dropping down, right? And making a new low and, and seeing what's up with buyers in this whole area here, right? It was just the beginning. So it could have, as I was talking about during the session, it could also, you know, continue to this point and set up here. So I put on a small position, which I ended up getting out of, but now I don't, we'll see what happens on this. could be confirming right now. But um, the point is the, the entry here on this very, very low volume above the automatic rally, right? And after, beyond that, there was a bit of weakness, which I didn't like how this popped up, and I ended up closing the trade. Now, and there's a weakness here. So where did I close it? It was after this. Um, that is excessively high volume weakness for being long, right? So if you're in a trade, and this is a good example of managing the trade and just trusting what you're seeing. You know, here's the strength, and it was good enough to go long. You know, we're in a bullish environment, but there's our high volume strength coming in. And then as the trade is barely moving along, this weakness comes in on this amount of volume. Again, here, higher prices tell us about sellers, right? getting a new high on this way up and confirming the weakness with the close here. So just factually speaking, there was a bit of selling, a good amount of selling that came into these higher prices. Um, so to manage the trade based on what I'm seeing, you know, and I'm not surprised this happened though. That's why I got out. But now we're down here. So this, <laughs> to get the analysis right up to the minute, this now is just at a fake break of this. The volume is here. And this is excessive volume on the way down. If we can get in the one minute and look in there, it's about price areas, not time frames, and really see are there spikes down here of activity. We'll see how that goes. Um, ideally, these would be the highest volume in this area, not the surrounding ones. Um, so maybe we end up, you know, again with a fake break and testing this level again once we get an automatic rally and a test here. We'll see how it forms. But um, so that was the trade there. That was me managing the trade after weakness, not staying in it. And now it may set up again, which originally, you know, I was good with this area. And it's there's that 618 again. And we may even get another overshoot. So that may be setting up. Um, also today, I took the pound yen. Now, it was a classic. We need the pound to come down. Pound is done with this bearishness. It's a little healthier now. Um, but the, power, the yen was also weak. But uh, if we, that's the fib, right, that we're going into today from this low to high. And 
our background really was this uh well we didn't look at the pound dollar but they both had this very high volume activity very very high volume here pound pairs and this was some aggressive buying defined as aggressive buying not weakness coming in right we can make higher closes volume is very high but we keep making progress to the upside then we accept the higher prices without weakness so we do have high volume strength in the background it may not be traditional but if you're not sure what high volume means in this case a little you know out of the norm look at what happened as a result and again the result of the higher prices being accepted there and each one that's high volume we have a higher close as a result high volume higher close as a result right high volume higher close so none of this confirms weakness whoever sold into it got run over and supply you know if it was really weakness coming in we would definitely see like possibly even more up here to have price up there if there's so much supply so there really wasn't um and we see the lack of activity up there okay so not to do the whole background analysis but the pound today bullish um again pound dollar probably pound anything basically um so to have this fib drawn here and now we enter now we were sitting around waiting for the news to come out 4 30 a.m my time the high impact pound news today and what was the course cpi hpi C C P H I bpi um and we really was uh you know it's, it's a classic situation where i wanted the news to be negative so price could come down so i could buy right and that's exactly what happened here's the news candle here's a 618 guess what it's an overshoot um it confirmed strength and what happened to the sell-off right 5 10 15 20 minutes after we're just confirming strength here and I, I said at the time this is likely the low of the day um and if it again i'm out of this trade and it, it could do like the aj and go lower and set up again but uh it hit some weakness here which made me get out of it at about 20 pips so um this again classic situation bullish environment having the news bring it down and it's just you know pulling an ack bar as it's a trap uh here's our test 14 ema following that very 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 low volume before it takes off here's our automatic rally and so there's the entry um and this is the pound yen so it's more pips than it may appear um and again to see weakness coming in to that extent tells me the trade is you know losing a lot of uh probability and i just closed it at that point so once the weakness confirmed so um you know something like this says it's it's likely not done with accumulation and it's likely going to do perhaps what the aj did right same situation or the au where it ran into that weakness and then is possibly setting up again from this point we'd have to have low volume supply test here so again to apply that here this if we're hitting some weakness here which we just saw then we could end up with this pattern or somewhere in here where i'm looking to buy into these lower areas it could be you know a, a, whatever a fake break of this level or this support or all the way down here wherever it wants to set up properly um since we did get a limited amount of supply so it's likely not just going to run off and maybe pop down again um but you know in a few hours it'll get a bit later and that'll just be it for the day i don't have to take it on a trade so that's about it we'll see what happens here but it, it, already there's, there's some excessive volume on the on the supply test up here close to the 14 EMA the uh, the 50 fib which is a test level and the strength is not so focused the way I would want to see probably really standing out here so as we know the setups really this one's not quite there um, but when this happens again like I say another pop down and a fake finally a, maybe a 618 overshoot fake break pattern there and seeing volume really focused off the low and, and lack of volume at the test so we have the imbalance really shown then I would look for that um okay so that's it hopefully that's helpful for you guys especially again those who you know a lot of people have purchased the course and you know you should be doing well you should be getting these setups it's these are really really the simple obvious ones um the market's in a great condition right now where it's just handing these out um so if you're doing it right then you're doing well um if you're having any trouble you know again for people who bought the the main video course 
If you have any, any trouble, you can join a live session if you're able to uh, at no charge and you know ask questions and, and see the live analysis, see if it matches up with yours and maybe get some help if you need it. Uh, okay, guys, well, let me know if you like the video and I'll see you in the next one.